Okay, yes, sir. We're just waiting on a notification. And once yeah. again, thank you very much. I'm very excited to hear. Well, thank you, sir. Okay, perfect. Boom. And we are live. I want to thank everyone for tuning in to a very special edition of Off the Record on the People's Podcast this evening. We have a wonderful guest with us, uh, none other than a musician, a poet, and uh, just a, gr a great FOI, Brother Akil uh, Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum uh, salam. I'm very excited that you are here with us uh, this evening. Um, and I'm looking forward to hearing your, your journey in music and your journey in life. Uh, the, uh, the first question that we want to know is, sir, when did you first hear the teachings of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad? I first heard, uh, I first heard the minister's name. Is it an echo? No, sir, I can hear you. Okay, praise be to Allah. I, heard that. I first heard the minister's name, you know, through public enemy, where he said, I didn't know who he was. But we said, you know, Farrakhan's a prophet. And I think you ought to listen to what he could say to you, what you ought to do. And, you know, and a few other times when they, when they mentioned his name. And then um, around just about a year before I joined the ranks, I read the autobiography of, uh, of Malcolm X. And also that year, about a few years, um, about six months removed from that, I, and, uh, when I was in Catonsville Community College, this was uh, February of 1990, um, then the National Youth Minister, um, Brother Conrad Muhammad, and um, brother your uncle, Brother Jamil Muhammad, he was you know my minister when I joined the ranks, and um, and uh, brother then Brother Patrick Muhammad, now Brother Rasul Muhammad, they came to uh, join the Black Student Union meeting, and that was the first time that I heard the uh, the teachings, you know. Um, in person, other than just reading it, you know, um, and it just made the world a sense to me. And um, a sister that was there gave me or let me hold two videos of the uh, of the honorable minister. One was called the um, the making of the devil, and the other one was the the mother's his Mother's Day talk from uh, 1989. And um, so I, you know, was listening, and um, you know, the first time I, I came. Uh, came out and it actually was July 4th and it wasn't a meeting. I didn't know why. I knew we wasn't celebrating, you know, what everybody else was doing. But so then I ended up about a month later, August 12th was the first actual uh MOS meeting that I attended. And then I registered uh October 29th, 1990. Great to be so alive. Beautiful, beautiful. And um Sister Tracy says I some Lakin family. My uncle Minister Jamil says I some Lakin family. Um and he said you are very uh, brilliant, um, a very brilliant man. Praise be to Allah. Praise okay, yes, sir. So um, once you accepted the teachings, how did your family and friends feel about that? Um, my friends, well, let me see my family first. Um, my, my father, he wasn't for it. He was cool with it. And that's what I wanted to do kind of thing. Um, my, my younger brother, I would say was kind of indifferent, not really uh, negative, but he didn't really, you know, when I would try to say stuff, he didn't really want to, you know, really wouldn't, um, want to hear, you know, the things I was saying. And, um, with my mother, um, she was against it, but what was, what was interesting to me, as I mentioned a few moments ago, the, um, I remember one, I don't remember what day of the week it was, but I was playing in the living room, the, uh, the minister's mother day, Mother's Day talk from 89. And all through, and not all through, but at different, and she was cleaning the house at the time. And at different points throughout the lecture, she was bearing witness because she didn't, this is time, I'm not, you know, I'm, you know, I'm not registered. I'm not even necessarily processing at the time. I'm just, you know, watching the teaching. And she just heard the man speaking the truth and she was bearing witness to it. She didn't know who he was or what I was watching because, I was in the church at the time, so it wasn't, it wasn't, you know, it wasn't necessarily strange to see me, you know, watching a preacher, and that's what she thought it was. And then, maybe a week or two later, when she found out who it was, then it was like, you know, all these questions and you know this and that. And um, my thing was, you know, uh, I certainly, I mean, of course, I'm not the best no by no means, but most of the questions that she would ask. I can answer, I, and, I, and if I couldn't, I would get them, but you know, 
she didn't really want to necessarily want to know. She just wanted, didn't want me to, uh, you know, to go in this way. But, um, but I would say that um, I'm the only believer, you know, in my, in my, uh, in my family, but I think, you know, um, I would say they came to definitely respect it and they, you know, supported me and not, well, present tense, support me, you know, in different ways, you know, throughout the, uh, throughout the years. Definitely thankful, uh, definitely thankful to them. Praise be to Allah. Excellent, excellent. Okay, so you're 1990, Baltimore. Uh, what is the climate like uh, outside of the mosque as far as how the people uh, treat the uh, nation in the city? And what is it like being trained inside the mosque? In the, in, the, um, in the city, I would say many people were open. Many people, it's a lot of, you know, nation has a lot of friends. You know, your, your, your uncle, my minister at that time, you know, Brother Jamil, and I mean, all the believers really, you know, made a lot of, you know, a lot of, you know, I mean, the Honorable Minister and the Muslim Elijah Muhammad, you know, you know, made, you know, friendship for us in all walks of life. But I mean, it was a lot of that. And I mean, there was opposition, um, but I think at that time there was a consciousness and, and people were open. It just, it just was whether or not we, if we, for the most part, when we came to the people, you know, in, uh, in good spirits, you know, we, we were received, you know, really well. It was a lot of, um, it was a lot of love. I'm not gonna say it was no opposition. I'd be lying if I said that, but um, it was, um, it was a lot of love, I would say. Um, internally, it was, it, I'll try to give a quick answer and then you can ask, you know, for more detail if you want. I don't know if, uh, how many football fans are listening, but I would say that even though the Ravens didn't exist at that time, um, being in the presence of the FOI in the house, and in the field at that time, like you said, um, brother, you know, um, your, your uh, godfather, our captain, you know, brother Akil, he was, you know, he was the captain at the time, and, you know, brother Larry was the uh, first officer. And being, being in the presence of them, it, I, can, I know what I want to say, I'm just, I don't want to, I'm trying to think about without talking your ears off. Um, Coming to the presence of the FOI was like a opposing football team coming in the presence of like Ray Lewis and the Ravens defense. And to the degree, and to the degree that we were not in the right as us and, and the people, you knew you was going to get hit, like coming in the middle of the football field. You knew you was going to get lit up. And, and, and Brother Larry was, Brother Larry was, you know, was, um, was like Ray Lewis. And it, it was, it was intense, but it was love. You know what I'm saying? And you just, it just, you know, um, if you, to the degree that also in this same general time frame, um, uh, the study guide rising above emotion to the thinking of God came out in this general time frame, um, and to the degree that we strive to, you know, begin to rise above emotion, we begin to appreciate the intensity and how the steel was sharpening steel and that it was love you know and um and i mean it was a it was a beautiful thing beautiful praise be to a lot I, I hear a lot of about brother larry i knew his son and the training of the foi in baltimore and i always talk to sister tracy about how much i admire the believers of baltimore because the only view i know of baltimore is through the wire so it's like, how are you all so strong dealing with crack and the drugs and the drug? You know, how were the FOI able and the MGT, how were y'all able to thrive in that environment? I think uh, it, I think uh, it's, the, it's the environment that, you know, it's the environment that we, you know, that we come from. I mean, you know, I think when you when you coming up in an environment, um Ideally, you don't necessarily have, or we don't necessarily have a, a one-dimensional um, outlook on the environment. You know, you know the, you know the, you know the occupational hazards, the risks, and you know, and stuff like that. But you also, you know, know the love and the, you know, and the, the camaraderie and the beauty 
in different aspects. So um, it was, it was, um, I would say, I, I think it'd be overstated to say we were used to it, but um, it was the environment that we were familiar with. And, and um, not that all of us came up the same way. I, I know for me, I mean, I grew up in the hood, but not necessarily the hood hood. So for me, um, uh, being the monster FOI in that, especially in that time, and NOI security was um, was street. Actually, for me, it was like street knowledge one hundred and one mm. on a different, you know, on a different level. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Basically, Basically. I just my experience was pretty was predominantly that you know when you come to the people, you know, with respect. And you know, to the degree that we practice the you know proper way of handling people, is to that degree you know that we get love from the people. It's been, um, in general, my experience. You know, of course, it's it's definitely opposition here and there for sure, but overall, great praise be to a lot. And uh, my uncle showing you love. And Sister Tracy is saying that Baltimore is so much more than a wire, and that there's a lot of love then and now. Praise be to a lot. My sister Naima sends the greeting as well. Okay, great. So my next question for you, sir, is uh, how do you, can you tell us your favorite interaction of the most honorable minister was Farrakhan? My favorite uh, interaction? Yes, sir. Did he come into Baltimore um, during that time period? Well, I mean, it's, it's hard to say one, but I mean, if I um, if I had to say one, it's really tough to say one, but it, it <laughs> It's like, anyway, it would be the, the day, you know, the Million Man March, if I had to say one, if you talk, I mean, if I, if I understand the, the question correctly, um, that would be, that would be it, you know, beyond a, um, beyond a shadow of a doubt in terms of, you know, a singular, um, a singular experience, so to speak. Mm, if okay, I understand, great. I'm not sure if I understand the question correctly, but. Yes, sir. No, I'm, I'm like a personal one. Like, did you ever, did he ever come to Baltimore when y'all were on post or things like oh, that? Oh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, actually, um, in, it had to be 1990 because I wasn't registered. Um, we, this was my first time going on the road um, with the FOI. I wasn't registered. I didn't have, even have a suit at the time. I had, a, I had some dress pants and an owl you sweater with the, uh, it's even handled there, but, uh, but I was I was with you know I was with the uh, the FY, I believe it was you know with uh shout out to uh, uh brother Jamal and brother Tyrone and brother Dante I believe and brother Fontaine we, the minister was teaching that I believe um, his alma mater South Carolina's uh, teachers college if that's correct I'm not sure but it was uh, I believe it was South Carolina teachers college something like that somebody I believe it could um, send it in the chat um, but after he spoke he had came over to us and he, he shook, um, he shook, we was blessed to shake his hand. And it was, it was an honor. I mean, I wasn't, you know, like I said, you know, I mean, uh, I was on deck, I was with the brothers, but I didn't, you know, I, and it was in my mind, I was like, wow, I don't even, you know, I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm just a guy, I'm not even, I'm learning, I'm here and I, it's an honor, but that was, that was the first time. And that was, that was an honor. And then um, a number of times, not a whole lot, but a number of times um, when he would be in the city and or when we would be um, in D.C., it, you know, we were blessed to help help uh, do security in the hotels. And sometimes he would, you know, come past and, you know, give us the greetings like that. And, that, and of course, you know, that's, you know, it goes without saying that, that that's a huge uh, you know, honor and blessing just to, you know, to, to be a part of that. But I, I never had like the other than that, those kind of things, the, you know, like the one on one. Yes, sir. Praise be to a lot. And shout out to brother uh, uh, Jamal. He just posted a picture, a throwback picture today on his Instagram and on his Facebook uh, yes, with sir. the minister. And I, and I remember brother Dante very uh, well from when we were younger. Uh, um, my cousins and them always talking about brother uh, um, Dante and brother and then uh, brother Fontaine. I'm um, brother Abdul. Um, first of all, my uncle minister Jamil says Winston Salem. Then brother Abdul Rasul, formerly brother Fontaine. Yes, sir. Thank you. Peace. Right. This is one of the greatest young soldiers. He is one of my first great soldiers in the God Squad. I'm so proud of you for holding in faith. May Allah continue to bless you uh, and your way in every single way possible. Peace, Brother Dear Joshua, so much. Oh, thank you, as well, Brother Abdul Rasul. And boom. 
All right. And he said, and Minister Jamil said, this man is a key element of the little mosque that could. Praise be to Allah. Okay, great. So at, so now I would like to talk to you about your uh the incident that we talked about offline with yes, you being sir. with you being stabbed and you surviving mm-hmm. that. Uh how did that come about and how and how did you keep your spirit up after that? Um uh I w- it started we was doing security at the uh it was actually in the um the area where the um the FOI apartment was and um I had some uh some interactions with one of the um one of the neighbors um he actually lived in the same you know in that same building on the uh third floor if my memory is serving me correctly and um that the week prior, I was stabbed on uh, New Year's Day, um, New Year's uh, January the first, going into January the second, and the week prior to that, um, I guess because of the you know quote unquote you know holidays and stuff, he had you know a lot of um, you know liquor or whatever in him, and he had issues uh, with you know some of the law enforcement that you know that we trying to you know driving to maintain that we were you know. And we were there to, uh, you know, there to uphold. And um, he had been talking, you know, all week. And I didn't, I didn't, um, I didn't really think much of it because, you know, I, other than that, you know, I had a good rapport, you know, um, with him and his children and his wife, you know, when we say it was, you know, no problems. But um, this day, you know, all that week, you know, he had been doing a lot of talking, you know, this and that. Um, and, um, one day, this day, uh, January 1st, you know, we were talking to him about something. I was talking to him about something. And um, he he went into his, uh, uh, you know, he went into his apartment and, you know, said, I'll be back. And um, it just so happened, you know, praise be to Allah, you know, all praise is due to Allah, to, you know, for, uh, you know, Brother Captain Akil and um, uh, Brother Captain, uh, you know, Brother Captain Dennis. You know, always, you know, forever. And uh, brother Daryl, uh, he's from, uh, you know, from Chicago, but you no, know, um, based in Baltimore at that time. Um, it just so happened that brother Dennis had to use the uh, use the restroom, so it, it just happened to, you know, to um, you know, to be on the site, you know, um, um, at that time. And um, I guess you know, brother Akil had heard, you know, the tension, you know, the um, the uh the neighbor mouthing off and he came up and asked you know what was going on and I explained to him what was happening and he and told him that you know he had just said I'll be back so I you know but I killed I guess me being somewhat naive I didn't know the fullness of what that well I had no idea I didn't think that uh 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 I didn't think that he had anything like that in his heart I knew he was frustrated but I just thought you know it was the liquor talking or whatever and um so when he, he came out he, you know, came out and he had, you know, the uh, the blade, you know, in his uh his hand. I would say that the um the blade was about the distance from your hip to your knee, and um when he, you know, he had came down, came down to where I was with uh, where I killed, and he had, you know, he had, you know, reached out and I tried to uh to uh to block it. I thought I had blocked it, but evidently I, you know, didn't know didn't block it strong enough because it, you know, went um. You know, went through, and um, I, you can't really. If you was in person, you could see it. But the the tip of the uh, the tip of the blade went in here, um, cut, not cut off, but cut part of my tongue, maybe about a half a centimeter or so into my tongue. And the tip, the tip of it came out over here. Like if you could, um, I guess if you want me to, I can get close and show you the wound. If you want, I don't know if you, but if not, and um. And I, I had no idea that it was, uh, you know, that uh, I didn't even know I was stabbed. You know what I mean? Um, and then at a certain point, I was, you know, you know, losing, spitting, um, you know, all of this, uh, all this blood out. But I'm calm. I mean, I'm amped because we, you know, we in the we in the mix. You know, what I'm saying in the tussle, or whatever. And then at a certain point, um, uh, I think brother, uh, brother Captain Dennis must start to recognize that how much, you know, um, you know, uh, blood that I was losing. And, you know, and I remember him saying, you know, he said, you know, just, you know, just 
and this chill right he's relaxed you know and um he said brother keep he said keep praying the master for our muhammad pray the master for our muhammad brother you know what i mean and um and i knew at a certain point i i didn't i didn't uh at a certain point i knew that i could die because of the amount of blood that i was losing and i knew that the only thing that i could do was you know as as uh brother captain and again you know salute brother captain dennis brother captain kill brother daryl forever you know what i mean um uh, I knew that the only thing I could do was to, you know, keep calm, you know, and remain in prayer and, you know, and, and um, you know, praise be to Allah through the whole ordeal and, you know, to the ambulance came, you know, I was blessed to be just as calm as, you know, I'm talking to you now. And I was, I pray be to Allah, I was blessed to be uh, aware and awoke right up until, uh, right up until surgery. And um, I remember when um when the ambulances <clears throat> pardon me when the ambulances came out there the um brother cat my kill had you know grabbed him and again i can't oh afraid to do to it i can't you know i can say it but even though i'm saying it i you know i'm just super grateful because i i don't i don't think you know by law for me i don't think i would be here if it wasn't for brother captain dennis but cat McKill and and brother daryl i mean i just i really don't um, but when the, when the ambulances came, but I killed had you know, had, you know, had grabbed, the, you know, blade. So he, <clears throat> he endured, you know, a severe, you know, cut, you know, cuts on his, uh, you know, on his hand and, um, uh, brother Daryl also. And I was, I think I was, I don't know. Uh, I think I was seated right near somewhere. I don't know if I was seated on the curb or, or on the, on the, um, in the ambulance, but I remember, I don't, I didn't know why actually until recently, I learned some things about this at a recent class and brother, uh, brother Dennis was teaching. I learned some things about that night that I hadn't heard, but from my perspective at that time, I remember that they, um, they wanted to tend to uh, brother Cat Michael and brother Daryl for the injuries for their hand. And I thought that for whatever reason, they just underestimated, you know, um, what has happened to, you know, to me. Who, uh, Brother Dennis was talking recently within the past month, you know, um, in the class that, you know, he basically, he said that the, the uh, one of the medics said in so many words that, you know, that I may not make it, so it'd be best to tell them because they figure they know it's better to place their energy on what they know they can do in terms of, you know the severe, you know severing, you know wounded um, hands and arms. Then, than me, they they, they it, it low key, you know ripped me off, and you know and um you know um uh, think you know brother Dennis said he told him if if he if he don't make it, one of some of y'all not gonna make it, and and you know and shortly thereafter, you know you know they started tending to me on a different level, and um you know we got to the hospital, um and if I if I can rewind. Um, if I may, I don't know if you want to, okay. So about a year before, um, about a year before I, uh, was introduced to the teachings, it was two books that I had read. One was called as a man thinketh, and the other one was the power of positive thinking. And one of the things that, um, was mentioned in both books was the power of positive thinking in general and faith in particular. Um, AIDS one in healing and it helped. That's uh, uh, one point. Second point, um, in, in I believe it was uh, 91, um, maybe early 92, but I believe it was 91, the Honorable Minister did a, uh, um, he did a talk called God's Healing Power, you know, point two and three, um, about a year or so, uh, I don't remember the exact time frame, but before I was stabbed, you know, by the cat McKeel, it got shot multiple times and we saw how well and how quick he recovered and how, if you didn't know what had happened to them, when you see him, you would have no idea what he just endured. So in my mind, you know, 
you know, thanking Allah for the, you know, for the, you know, the the supreme, you know, wealth and wisdom that the honorable minister shared in in that in that talk, God's healing power, um, and seeing the example of of Brother Akil, um, his faith, his determination. In my mind, I was like, you know, if I don't die, I'm going to recover 100 percent Inshallah, it was just no doubt. And because because uh because you know again the honorable minister and, and the example of of uh brother Akil, but excuse me, brother Captain Akil, please forgive me. Um and because at a certain point, like I said, the, the the knife you know went in here and came out over here and it, it cut my minor, not my major, but the um minor carotid artery, I think is the name of it, and cut not cut my part of my tongue off, but cut into it. And at a certain point, you know, when I had the trait, I remember the doctors was talking to my parents and they said, you know, there's a chance that he may never talk again and, you know, this and that. I didn't say nothing to them, but in my mind, like I said, you know, I was, you know, I, if I don't die, I'm going to recover 100% because I seen it. I mean, I seen, I mean, we just saw, we just saw what happened, you know, you know, to our cat. I mean, and not just that he recovered, but the faith, like he wasn't, I mean, a man just endured that, and he, he, you know, just like you looking right now, like it was like not, not nothing, but I mean, this man just, I want some real like superhero type, but praise be to a lot. I mean, real life. I mean, and these things, you know, this is, I can't, you know, um, I just say this now. I I pause for the next question, but his, you know, the example and the words of the honorable minister. An example of, you know, Brother Cat McKeel just spoke so many, you know, volumes of wisdom, inspiration, you know, um, for me, I'll I just pause it there. Praise, praise be to Allah. Allah. So many people were saying praise be to Allah. Bear witness in the uh, in the chat. And thank you, everybody, who likes, share, subscribe to people's podcast. Now, um, what is what happened to the, the, the man who had the knife? They... Uh, <laughs> They gave him some uh, some minor charge. I don't remember. It certainly what it certainly gave him attempted murder. He might have, you know, think they gave him, I don't know, two and a half years, some kind of, you know, charge that was way beneath, you know, what he uh, what he did, in my opinion. But other than that, you know, I don't. I mean, you know, I don't know. Okay. Yes, sir. Well, well I'm, I'm glad that you are. Uh... That you that you recover it and Thank and now you you're know. a musician and we we get to hear about your poetry and your musician shout out to all the FOY who were fighting with you that day and the paramedics and of course I've been, you know Master Far Muhammad most of my life, Muhammad the Minister of the Spirit uh to keep you going brother and being positive during that trial. Uh and, and what are those two books again? Because I want to make sure that we uh, acknowledge those two books about the power of thinking, the power of what were they, what you um, the first one was as a man thinketh. And the, yes, and the other one was the, the power of positive thinking. Yes, sir. And, um, and the minute and the talk, I mean, and the big, you know, the uh, the honorable minister, the honorable minister's talk was uh, God's healing power. But if anybody has that on YouTube, please tag me in the chat. I was, every now and again, I, I type it on YouTube. I haven't found it yet, but um, I used to have a tape, but you know, it was on cassette. So, but I, I would love to uh, to to listen to that again. Praise be to Allah. Beautiful, beautiful. And uh, do you ever do you ever come across people who are going through something physically or um, being injured that you have to give them the uh, some inspiration? You know, um, I have, but I don't know if this is I don't know if this is bad on my part. I usually, in terms of what people say, the inspiration that whatever that they get from me is usually like just me showing in love in general and being, you know, kind and warm. And, but like, um, cause I don't really outside of my, some people, <laughs> some people would say, brother, you know, what you mean? You don't talk a lot, but I kind of don't other than people, um, outside of my art and people in my inner circle, I kind of don't really talk a lot. So, um, um, most people don't know like I don't I mean um so it's only in general I know what you mean like but it's not I haven't really 
been um, in a situation um, where somebody was going through that and I was inspired to, to share, you know, um, um, what happened to me, but I just wanted to be there for them in general. And if it came up, sometimes it comes up organically, but um, I don't know if that's something I need to, you know, to, uh, to work on. Cause I never, um, not never, but I rarely, it, unless it comes up organically or somebody asked me, I had no problem talking about it, but I, I just never really, you know, um, and even as an artist for all the stuff that I've, you know, written, I've never written, you know, I've, uh, I've never written about it, but um, I don't know if that's something I need to, you know, change or whatever. Yes, sir. Praise be to Allah. Uh, well, um, <clears throat> Sister Tracy says, I know you know, but some people said, um, oh, of course, Brother Abdul Rasul says, peace, full lecture is available. Hit, hit him Monday. He'll he'll get it to you, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Some people saying the power of positive thinking. I'm inventing, oh, that's my uncle, Mr. Jamil. As a man, think of James. Alan, other people saying great books. Um, Mr. Mill saying, brother, Captain Kills, superhero, straight up. He's stronger and healthier today than before the shooting. Some people just know you bear witness. Um, yeah. I don't want to butcher this person's name, but A. Taylor is saying, alhamdulillah. Some people just showing love. Excellent. Great. Thank you very much. And one, okay, so now we, we, have a, we have a few more questions for you, but I have to do a quick 60 second commercial break yes, from all of the sponsors. Of the people's podcast is this this um we're starting off this month great with some great and shout out to uh sister tracy for the suggestion uh she's always um you know a supporter from behind the scenes but um i reached out to her about some poetry because i know she likes to do some poetry and we also look forward to her coming on the scene as well but she she That's stepped right up and was like oh, i got somebody for you okay Crazy. if you'd like to be a sponsor or donor of the people's podcast please cash at the people's podcast uh, my brother Rashad, Street Premier Media Production. He has a 4K camera and a drone. He does television and film editing. Please reach out to him if you need any of that. My sister Miriam, ABC, I love me. Ballet virtually to young girls all across the country and right here in the studio in Atlanta, Georgia. Uh, sister Rashida Rafat, Rock Communications. They're doing a five year. Uh, anniversary special promo. If you're working on a book and you need copy editing, media um, relations, content development, please reach out to Sister Rashida Rafat with Rod Communications. Thank you very much. Uh, conflict resolution and squashing the beef. Student minister uh, out of Austin, Texas, Robert L. Muhammad. He's in the community doing a great work. His wife, Sister Fudia Muhammad, Children of the Most High. Her incredible book about. Um, Giving Birth to a God in the Science of Child read it, Rearing. Thank you very much, Sister Fudia. Uh, Brother Kenneth, Bowtie Maker Extraordinaire. He'll ship Bowtie to you anywhere in the country. Sister Sherry, Muhammad, Asiatic Minds. If you want to send your children to school virtually, Young Kings and Queens, they do a phenomenal job at AsiaticMinds.com. Dr. Henry M. Carter right here in Atlanta, Georgia, King Henry's Turkey Legs. Brother Rashad Muhammad of Chicago, COVID-19 Disinfecting Cleaning Services. My father's book, A Soldier in the Movement of Christ, also his new one, Down Is Not Out, abdushrif.com. And last but not least, my two books, Cleopatra with the K and No Father, No Excuse, both of which are available on Amazon. Thank you all very much. Okay, boom, we're, right, we're ready to go. All right, boom, all right. Some people showing love in the comments. Praise be to Allah, praise be to Allah. A lot of positive energy going on for our brother, Rosetta Kill. Okay, my next question for you, sir, is um, your musician, what type of music do you like to play? Uh, mostly, oh. I would say uh, jazz and classical, but it's some, you know, it's a, a little R&B stuff in there. I'm, I'm, you know, a lot of room for improvement in that room, but, but jazz and classical, mostly a little like R&B kind of stuff too. Yes, sir. Now, when you say jazz, are we talking about who? Like we're saying Whitney Marcellus, are we going Miles Davis, or where are we going with it? <laughs> I'm not on there. I'm not. Uh, I'm not on that level. But you know, I mean. Um, but th but those I admire those those greatly. Um, my my favorite. Um, it's a lot. I mean, it's a lot. But uh, you know, it's you know John Coltrane, Grover Washington, um, you know Cannonball Adderley, um, uh, George Coleman. Um, 
just to, I mean to name a uh, to name a few as far as as far as the saxophone goes, but it's, it's so many. Um, Alice Coltrane, you know John Coltrane's wife. You know, she plays play you know the harp and she's you know. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. I didn't know this organist as well. Yes, sir. She's I mean phenomenal. I mean like I mean, you know she's I mean she's incredible. Um, um, there's so many people. I mean, uh, Regina Carter. She was the first um, jazz violinist that I had ever heard of. I I, I didn't even know such a thing uh, existed. And um, you know, she's um, yeah, she's uh, she was you know, inspirational on that level. And um, since I'm talking musically, I don't know if it's going to go there or not. But just um, to mention too, I mentioned you no. Know, um, um, Brother Larry earlier, but like one of the things that he introduced me to, um, me and um, Brother uh, James Nynex, one time he was, um, this was um, actually a few months um, after I was stabbed, he was giving us a ride home, you know, from the, uh, from the mosque, and we, we got it in his car, and he was playing classical music, and it was, I mean, and you know, I, he was the first black person that I ever heard play classical music, <laughs> and you know, and I we just knew Melaria's intent. You know what I mean? Like, and it was just wow. And 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 he said he said that he uses you know the um the music is a natural sedative, a natural you know calming agent, and that really that that um you know that that seed as well as um. You know, a few maybe uh, a few a few months before um, before I joined on, you know, finding out that the honorable minister, you know, plays the violin was you know um, a big inspiration, um, you no know, big inspiration for me as well. Praise be to Allah. Yes, sir. My grandmother um, Mary and Boss, she would always play Yanni and like Ella Fitzgerald, like a lot of stuff, though, like when she was trying to get me to do homework and stuff like that, she would have the slow music on and the classical stuff to try to uh, get me to stay focused. So I, I'm up on it a little bit. I got to, you know, study more, but I'm definitely up on it a little bit. Um, also, with the Ravens uh, reference, um, I was a big Ravens fan, so I don't even know. So shout out to the Ravens for uh, years, you know, with Ray Lewis and all, and all of them. So if y'all was like the Ravens, as the FOY in the 90s, that's a, that's a great compliment. That's a great compliment to the brotherhood of the uh, of the Moss number six. Okay, my next question for you, sir, is do you have children? No. No children. Okay, boom, so I don't have to ask that question. All right, well, my next question for you is, sir, what do you like to do for fun? Really, just the, the music. I guess I don't really do a whole lot in that, in that um, it's just mostly the, you know, music and, you know, um, and you know, I like watching a lot of stuff, you know, comedies and you know, a lot of uh because I'm low key. I mean, people who know me know this, but like, you know, I'm low key, um, I'm low key silly, like a low key comedian on it, you know. <laughs> okay, you know, okay. I mean, but it's only something that, you know, cause I, I love catching people off guard because a lot of times people only see me and uh not a little less nowadays because it's in my art more, but for years. Even to this day, sometimes a lot of people only see, you know, the serious me or me in work mode. And I like saying random stuff. I catch people off guard. I love it. You know what I mean? Like, you know, <laughs> he joked to you. <laughs> I remember one time, I remember one time I was working in a, I don't even remember what it was. Um, I was working in NOI one time. Uh, and uh, it, in this site, it was, uh, you know, it was uh, FY and MGT. And it's this uh, sister. Um, I, I I don't even know what I said. It was something light, you know. And um, and I laughed, and uh, I I laughed and smiled. And the sister was like, you know, because um, my name, you know, my uh, I came into rank. My name, you know, brother, uh, uh, you know, brother Sean, brother Sean next, and you know, in, uh, Save His Day ninety six, you know, um, got the Muhammad, and I, I don't mind talking about it if you want, but. The long story short, um, I killed, and then you know Mizan uh, started. Initially, I viewed it as a, uh, my rap name, but then I started to view it as a mission statement. And then I think in maybe 2016, um, you know, it became um, official. And I, you know, in the uh, you know um, in the mosque in terms of you know what I'm um, you know known as and you know pay charity as and stuff. 
But um, I was saying that to say something. Um, but and the sister said, you know, brother Sean, you you laughed. You, I'm like, what? I'm like, what are you talking about? But she was literally taken aback that I just that I laughed. I'm like, wow. I'm like, come on, man. But I understand because you're, you know, we, you know, all people saw was, I mean, people that you know that didn't really know me, on, you know, um, or knew me from afar was just, you know, the serious, you know, brother, studious brother, or whatever. Yes, sir. I understand. There were people for years. It wasn't until the people's podcast I started doing this. They said they didn't think I joked or smiled because all they saw me was holding posts and drilling. So I understand how sometimes being you know, people see you smile can, can throw people off. Uh, yes, sir. Okay, my next question for you, sir, is uh, spoken word. Do you do you have anything that you would like to perform for us or you know give us right now? Um. Yes, sir. Um. Um. I do. Uh, I say two thirds of his piece called "It Was Inspired by um, Inspired by the uh, Inspired by the Million Man March." It's called uh, Jamila. Um, um, yeah. Her name is Jamila, meaning the one so beautiful. Have you ever met one so physically attractive that you forget to be dutiful and seeking the inner beauty? One that's so fine that you don't look beyond the surface to the beauty of her mind. Not just a dime, multiply that a hundred thousand times. When I saw Jamila, it was a holy day. To me, it was divine. It was an overwhelming event, but only to see it with physical eyes is to miss the best part of the planet Earth. Not talking about between the thighs, between the ears. You hear? Do you know what I mean? Living proof of what Coltrane called a love supreme, a love supreme. More than you hope to pray for, sees above your dreams or wildest imaginations of infatuations. I remember the day that she was seen. I met Jamila in 1995 on October 16th. I feel more fortunate than Maxwell, one in a million like Larry Graham. So many brothers came to see her. It was like a Hajj or caravan, a love just like that jam by Isley Jasper Isley. We must look beyond the body to judge Jamila wisely, not just with the physical, with her, my third eye sees that we must look past the bodies into the mind of the divine. Again, she was fine as 200,000 plus dimes. My third eye sees her essence. In Jamila, I felt the law's presence. The Holy Quran says for the womb that gave birth to us, we should have reverence. And all our sisters should be honored and respected. She had a whole lot to say, but her primary message was one of reconciliation and a course atonement. <clears throat> Excuse me. It was no day of one night stand. I can't get caught up in the moment. It was a microcosm, a sign. It's been called a glimpse of heaven. When I met her, it was like two million plus present and every knee bowed, a tongue confessible witness because all of us suffer from some sort of sin sickness not just physically attractive. Indeed, Jamila, Shiva, the beautiful one, is a healer. Two million plus were there. Many more at home did hear her. She said to start with the man and woman in the mirror. She taught me to do for self, yet not be inordinately selfish. She had love for a sin-sick nation in the hellish condition. She taught to and how to settle with difference. Just one look, that's all it took. That day I made my decision. Divine commitment, no one night stand. It's straight from the heart. It's always and forever until death do its part. Love them and leave them. That's what I used to do, like Rick James and Tina Marie. The love for Jamila helps to remove the disdain. She helps to make me a man. No one night stand, word bond, no wham bam. Thank you, ma'am. The Honorable Louis Farrakhan conducted that marriage. Working out problems in relationships is what she encouraged. She had answers to Lisa Fisher's song, How Can I Ease the Pain in Relationships. She said, if my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and of course pray, seek my face and turn from wicked ways, then will you hear from heaven and see the healing of the land. The face you seek is God in person, if you understand. Supreme wisdom, solution to the problems of woman and man, about how we can go from man back to Superman, like that book by J.A. Rogers, from bees that rhymes with witches to sisters and to a goddess. And if we wanna make that progress, it's an eight step process. First, someone points out the wrong. The second is to acknowledge it. The third is to confess it to God and those offended and the one that follows it. The fourth step is to repent, meaning to feel sorrow or remorse. 
The fifth step is atonement or redemption from taking the course of action or thought that was wrong or a sin to atone or to redeem yourself or to make amends with the law of God and other person for what was done that was offensive. The sixth step is the, in the atonement process is forgiveness when the feeling of resentment and offense by the one who was offended cease for harm done. And the seventh step is the restoration of peace and reconciliation to become friends again. In my conclusion, the eighth step is harmonious oneness or the being perfect union. It's heaven on earth when Jamil and I come together. No wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. We're going to make it last forever. It was heaven on earth when Jamil and I came together. Like Keith Sweat and that other sister, we're going to make it last forever. Long live the spirit of the million man march. Hey, okay. Okay, yes, sir. Okay. All right, but I can't. I don't want to uh, be not. I don't want to be dense or not. You know, get up with it. So, is this is this about a woman or is this a metaphor? Or, you know, what I'm saying to the million march. Or is this a real woman that you wrote that about? It, it, was, it was a metaphor for the million man march. Okay, I, just I, making I, sure I'm about to say that's some smooth. That's some smooth talk right there. Well, <laughs> oh, praise, praise be to a lot. I, um, to try to make the long story short, I at the time we I think it was um uh. In, in the fall of um, 2000, it was, we had a, um, the five year anniversary, you know, um, commemoration at the uh, at Muhammad Mosque number six. And I was asked if I could, you know, write something to perform it. And, I'll, and at the time, one of, the, my, one of, the, one of the, uh, the predominant thoughts in my mind was that when we talked about the march, we only, the Million Man March, we only talked about the overwhelming, the overwhelming numbers. And it, I mean, it was, I mean, as Don Minister said on the final call, it was a glimpse of heaven without a doubt. And that's, you know, even that's an understatement. But I, I didn't think that it was enough talk about the principles of atonement and reconciliation in terms of, the, you know, the dialogue among the believers. But, and I was on the poetry scene at the time, and I, I wanted, I didn't, I wanted to write the poem in a way that was palatable to somebody that wasn't necessarily a believer or didn't necessarily, I didn't want to write a poem, quote unquote, just for Muslims. So I said, if I wrote it as though it seemed like I'm talking about a woman, it would be more, you know, you see what I'm saying? It would be, Absolutely. that was the, that was the intent. Well, you, you definitely nailed it. I mean, I, I was like, man, and I, and I was keeping up with the references of all of the love songs that you was on. I was like, okay, okay. Yes, sir. We going with it. Shout out to your uncle. Up, my, I ministered at that time. Well, I uh, actually, but students of college was the time at the March, but one of the, I mean, so many things, you know, uh, you know, one of the things that, um, that, uh, the brother minister Jamil, countless things that he did, you know, to us is, um, not just the love of music, but the, 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 how we, you know, it's, uh, I would say he, he embodies like our humanity really well. And, you know, the diversity of us, you know, like we not just, you know, yes, he's a soldier. Yes, he's a teacher. Yes, he's a husband. He's a father. But he he has a sense of humor. He's a you know he's I mean I know you know this, but he's a musical historian. But and he and he brilliantly infuses these things into his lectures at the, you know when he when he teaches and these and he you know all these things. I'm just I'm speaking for me, but I know I'm not just speaking for me. It's something that you know. One of many things that um, that uh, that we love about, you know, I, I did, brother, brother minister, um, you know, brother minister, you know, um, but yeah, that you know, you know, shout out again, you know, brother, let's do minister Carlos, you know, brother, but Abdul Rasul again, he was my first lieutenant, um, I, you know, I just, I, I, I don't necessarily gonna talk about it all, but I just, you know, he. He um every time I think about him, I always think of I always if I was writing it, I would if I it would be brother lieutenant, but the brother would be like in bold prints, you know. He just really embody um embodies um that um you know the love of the brotherhood. Of course, he's a worker and he you know puts us to work and he you know he you know taught and trained us many things, but he he did all of that with love. And that, and that, you know, and I just think, you know, um, I often say to people, you know, like they, a lot of times you hear um accounts of, 
how our first relationship, how our first relationship with um, our mother or our father impacts um, us in our you know relationships in life. But likewise, for me, I, I've long been of the viewpoint that our first um, uh, like relationships with the brotherhood, with the sisterhood, with the believers, those first relationships can be really impactful. And you know, when you bless to you know to um, you know to have such a you know such a you know a hardworking brother, such a good brother, such a brother that you know taught and trained us, you know, and 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 show love while doing it. Um, you know, I mean, he he embodied that, and I, I know, I again, I always talk your ears off, but I just I take these time to shout out people that I think about these things, but I don't really talk a lot. But you know, I, I you know, he embodies, and I think you know, brother, brother Minister Jamil embodies that when we talk in the Supreme Wisdom, you know, work cheerfully, fear not, you know, you're the best, the righteous, the powerful. But they embody these things in words and deed, and they they um um impacted you know, me so much and, you know, many, uh, many of us, uh, you know, so much. And, oh, my bad feet. And um, I, I didn't say anything about, I'm, I'm glad I didn't, I'm glad I didn't forget, but um, my brother, um, he, he's in, in the artistic world, he's known as Eda Poet MC, but, you know, brother Eric Muhammad, um, that's, you know, my, my uh, you know, big brother um, on so many levels um, as a believer, as a brother, as an artist, I mean, you know, uh, you know, salute. I, you know, I don't want to talk your ears off, but I'm glad I didn't forget, you know, because, um, you know, so many, um, so much of whatever I've been blessed to do of good as an artist, um, he's directly tied to, and he always, you know, he always, you know, there share the teachings with me. Um, word and deed, you know, um, tremendous example. And any, you know, anybody, any, you know, any of the believers that are artists, um, and they're not just believers, just people in general, even if you're not, you know, if, you know, if you're not, you know, necessarily registered, you you know, um, either poet MC, uh, you know, spelled, you know, grammatically correct online, uh, is definitely somebody, you know, um, I recommend, you know, you, um, uh, you know, holler at him. You know, his, I mean, he's a phenomenal artist as well, but yes, sir, just yes, even if you want to holler, just as a brother, um, as an artist, um, I mean, salute. I can't, I mean, that's, um, I'm glad I didn't forget that. But that's, that's um, you know, my brother. Praise be to Allah. Well, great. And thank everyone. I'm going to think, I can't wait to put this on YouTube tonight. Um, um, Sister Tracy is saying, with love, that's right. Alhamdulillah. Um, and she's saying our brother Jamil was a great minister to Maz and inshallah he'll come on to people's podcast soon talking about um, I guess I'm assuming brother E the poet, brother Eric the poet uh, E the poet like, my bad yes so, sir, yes sir, yes, sir my, bad. my bad I think, I was, could, you, could you say it again it was uh, broken up yes sir, what would you like your legacy to be um If uh, pray for that, I'll be blessed to you know find you know uh, find my wife. So I would want my legacy to be. I would want my my wife to say he was you know uh, a good man, a good lover. I would want my children, if I had children, to say he was a good father. I would want you know uh, the believers and the people to say he was a good brother. Um, and and I want you know be pleasing, you know to. Uh, you know, to Allah and just say, people say, you know, that, that, you know, that brother, uh, you know, he, he, he strived to, uh, you know, he, he, he strived to represent, uh, you know, that the nation of Islam, you know, Master Fra Muhammad, Mosam Elijah Muhammad, Yan Balu is far time. I mean, I'm certainly far from perfect, you know, as, but I heard, but Mustafa say years ago, he's the first one I heard say, you know, the biggest room is room for improvement. I'm definitely not, um, <laughs> definitely not perfect, but I, I, I pray that, you know, people, you know, say that he, you know, he he tried to be uh tried to be, you know, a good brother. Praise be so hard. Yes, sir. Well, I think you keep doing poetry the way you're doing it, brother. You ain't gonna have no problem. Uh if I if I said that same poem you went, girl, man, please, this is be going crazy, brother. <laughs> this Praise is going crazy. So 
Yes, there were um, um, Akachi Taylor. Hachi, I'm going to butcher that name. Hachi Taylor says the spoken word was fire. Sister Tracy says he's indeed a good brother. Yes, sir. And I'm about to put this on YouTube. I look forward to this. Everybody, please like, share, subscribe. Thank you very much again, Brother Akil. I look forward to staying connected with you, sir, and, and the community. And shout out to Sister Tracy helping us with um, all of the poetry. Uh, everybody who has talent, please continue to reach out because we're going to keep Town Tuesday going on the People's Podcast. Uh, this is Joshua Leonard Muhammad signing off for the People's Podcast. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum. Thank you very much. And thank everyone for watching. Thank you. Mm -hmm.